Thanks for joining us for the Plan 9 from Outer Space After Party. Whew! That film leaves a lot to talk about. But before we get started on this discussion, if you haven't watched the film yet, you need to go back and watch both the intro and the film. We're about to get heavy into some spoilers here. Now today, we've seen a lot of science topics, but there's a few we're just really not gonna cover, like zombies, ghouls, and vampires, for example. Also, flying saucers, because that's a discussion for another time. And trust me, based on the amazing number of films in the science fiction vault, we'll get another chance, or 10. But we are going to cover interstellar visitors and solaronites. First, interstellar visitors. As of 2020, we have no scientific evidence of humanoid or breathing interstellar visitors of any kind. But in 2017, our solar system did have one interstellar visitor, and the film producers in 1959 never could have imagined that this would happen. In October 2017, Oumuamua was discovered traveling through our solar system, and it has some pretty interesting similarities to the flying saucers we're not going to discuss. It's pretty flat and cigar-like, and when it was seen, it was clocked screaming through the solar system at over 92,000 kilometers per hour. It would take a very fast space cop to stop that. It came from very far away in interstellar space. Of that, we're very sure. But as of April 2020, scientists still aren't 100% sure, though they have posited that it may have come from a tidally disrupted planet somewhere in our galaxy. Who knows where that could be? If there are breathing aliens out there and they've seen Earth and they've seen us, in all likelihood, they went screaming right by probably at twice the speed of Oumuamua. Now, on to Solaronite. In Plan 9, Eros is concerned that humans are about to discover Solaronite, a substance that could destroy the Earth's sun. More importantly, he's concerned that this could set off a chain reaction that would destroy everything in the universe. Let's talk about exploding stars. Stars explode or go supernovae on a very regular basis. There's not exactly a schedule that we can look at, but we know that it's not uncommon. Exploding stars have been recorded in our own galaxy since 185 AD. And since that time, scientists have recorded several. In 2006, scientists figured out that the rate of supernova explosion in the Milky Way galaxy is roughly one to three per century. In April 2020, scientists from the Center for Astrophysics, Harvard and Smithsonian, and the University of Birmingham discovered the brightest supernova ever recorded. This supernova was more than twice as bright as the next luminous supernova. In fact, it exploded with the energy of one billion suns. Here's the kicker. It's 3.6 billion light years away, and scientists had to use super powerful telescopes to even observe it and know that it was there. So even if that energy is going to reach us, it might not do it for 3.6 billion years. Sometimes theorists come up with ideas about devices that could be built to destroy our sun manually. Remember, the sun is constantly experiencing violent reactions, and any device that could be launched at the sun for this purpose would burn up and become useless long before it ever got through the chromosphere. Not to mention, our sun experiences massive explosions every day, and any device that could be launched from Earth to the sun couldn't generate the type of energy necessary to create an explosion larger than those experienced by our sun minute by minute every day. Thanks for joining me for Sci-Fi Fridays with the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory. See you next time, and until then, don't go searching for Solaronite.
or for humanoid interstellar visitors.